There's a lot of Mike Morris signs. Okay, we'll leave it at that. We have to stop counting, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so you can feel it in the air. You can feel the change coming to Kitchener Center. You can feel the momentum. You can feel that uh, this time next week, Mike Morris is going to be the center. And that will be an extraordinary breakthrough for the Green Party. Uh, that will be something that is a game changer. And more than anything, that will be something that means that the people of Kitchener Center have real representation in Ottawa, someone who is going to be their champion, someone who is going to be a champion for the issues that matter to them, the climate, a life with dignity for every person in Canada, ensuring that we do the work on re reconciliation and creating a just society. Uh, people in Kitchener Center will know that as of this this time next week, they have got that rep representation in Mike Morris and in Ottawa. Mike, 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 c'est le moment uh, pour uh, les les électeurs ici à Toronto, um, pardon, pas Toronto, so, Kitchener Centre, uh, de faire le choix d'envoyer de, un représentant à Ottawa uh, qui partage leurs valeurs, qui va être un champion pour uh, les enjeux qui sont le plus important, le climat, assurer que tout le monde peut vivre une vie avec dignité ici uh, uh, au Canada et assurer qu'on fait le travail de réconciliation et de créer une société juste. Mike Moore, c'est la personne de le faire et moi, j'ai vraiment hâte de voir uh, dans une semaine qu'il soit le représentant ici, le député pour Kitchener Center. We can't wait. I can't wait. And so Mike, Mike is Mike is one of other green candidates that we are hoping to elect. I just came back from Prince Edward Island, uh, where I got to spend a few a couple of days with Greens from PEI, Greens from New Brunswick, Greens from Nova Scotia, from all over the Maritimes, and candidates from all over the Maritimes. And we were in PEI to make the point, which is that when Greens get elected, they stay elected. Uh, we have always won re-election, and we always win re-election because we do what Mike does in Guelph. We represent our communities well. We do what we say we're going to do. We collaborate uh, with other parties. We know how to play nice, right? We know how to share uh, and we know how to, I know it seems like a little thing, but it's a big thing these days. Um, and because of that, we are able to get things done. And for example, in Prince Edward Island, in two years in opposition, and opposition, not in government, the PEI Greens have managed to bring uh, in 14 separate pieces of legislation, 14 on things like the Climate, the Climate Leadership Act, the Poverty uh, st um, Elimination Strategy Act, things that are groundbreaking in the context of Canada, things that Greens were able to do uh, because they worked across party lines. And so we have seen of in terms of what Greens can do and the difference that Greens make when they're elected. And so my message to people in Canada today is that please, I want you to go and take a, yeah, that was never going to last. <laughs> I want you to go and take a good, long, hard look at the Green candidate that is running in your area. Uh, and I think that you will find someone there like Mike, uh, who has put in the work, who is passionate about their community and who you know you can count on uh, to do what they say when they get to Ottawa, to work across party lines in a time when we need to change the culture in Ottawa. Uh, because things do have to change. We're in an election now because the party that was in power decided that they wanted all the power. Uh, and that simply is not the culture that is going to get us to the finish line on things that matter, like the climate, on things that matter, like completing our social safety net, on things that matter, like reconciliation. And we can do those things. We can do those things. The fact that Mike is standing here today on the cusp of winning this seat in Toronto, uh, man, in Kitchener Centre um, is proof that people are ready for change. It's proof that big things are still possible. It's proof that people in Canada are ready to strike out in a new direction. So we say yes to climate action. We say yes to social justice. 
and we say yes to a life of dignity. Yes. And we say yes to reconciliation. Yes. And we say that we can do it and we will do it. And it starts with electing Greens like Mike. And so I am full of joy, I am full of, of hope, uh, I am full of optimism for this riding of Kitchener Centre. Uh, I'm asking people in Canada to take the leap, to make the choice, to send more Greens uh, to Ottawa. You know, I have said, of course, I recognize that there are tons of questions about our party. Of course, I recognize that. But when it comes down to it, you are electing someone to represent your community. And there's much more, uh, you know, of this, um, uh, much more where that came from. Uh, and I want you to take uh, these last few days and take a look at uh, those Greens running in your area. And with that, I am going to introduce a wonderful Green who, again, is the proof of concept that has demonstrated here in Ontario the hard work, the commitment, the dedication, the daring, the innovation that Greens bring when they get elected. C'est vraiment un honneur pour moi d'introduire notre, euh, notre chef du Parti vert de l'Ontario, quelqu'un qui, euh, euh, qui euh, démontre chaque jour la valeur d'élire les Verts pour leur communauté, mais aussi pour toute la province. Euh, on sait que quand les Verts sont élus, ils font des bonnes choses, ils travaillent fort pour leur communauté. Euh, Mike est le premier Vert d'être élu ici en Ontario, mais il ne serait pas euh, le, le dernier, ça c'est sûr. Ça c'est sûr, we can make sure that Kitchener, this area goes green federally and provincially, right? Yeah. And Mike is showing every way uh, why that matters. Uh, it is such an honor to call him a friend. It is such an honor uh, to be standing here with him. And I'm going to uh, pass uh, it over to him now. Mike, over to you. Good morning, everyone. It's such an honor. Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everyone. It is such an honor to be here in Kitchener Center today and to tell you how much momentum I am feeling in this riding. Uh, prior to the writ, I was knocking on doors with Mike Morris. Tons of support at the door. But I can tell you last week when I was knocking on doors with Mike, excitement, real excitement here in Kitchener Center that people are going to have a strong community advocate, real representation, somebody who's been a champion for this community, who's taken the lead on things like climate action, housing affordability, reconciliation, social justice. Um, and I can also tell you how exciting it was just on Sunday to be in Toronto Center, knocking on doors and talking to people there about Annamie Paul and just the outstanding job she did in the leaders debates last week. And Canadians, <laughs> Canadians got a sense of what strong, compassionate, real leadership looks like. Standing up for the issues that she believes in and that the Green Party believes in but also being very clear about the desire to work across party lines to put people first. And that's exactly what Mike Morris brings to Kitchener Center. And I can tell you, so many people have asked me, what can one Green MPP do? I can tell you a lot <laughs> from personal experience. And so without further ado, I want to say to the people of Kitchener Center, you have an opportunity to elect a real champion for your community. And so it's my pleasure to introduce to you the next MP for Kitchener Center, my good friend, Mike Morris. Thank you all. Thank you all. First of all, want to offer a strong 
and Ami, it is so wonderful to have you in Kitchener Center. Welcome to Kitchener Center again, and Ami. And a welcome back to my good friend Mike, who's been out with us knocking on doors for months now. On just last uh, uh, Friday with you all again, uh, back at the Reap House, Mike, welcome back to Kitchener again. I want to pick up on a key point that you heard both from enemy and from Mike. And you heard it from enemy at the leaders debate uh, just a few days ago. You've seen it from Mike in Guelph and folks in Guelph have been seeing this for years. How important it is to put aside all of the partisanship and the mud slinging and the name calling and actually just focus on where we have so much in common. A deep interest in taking action on climate change that follows the science in ensuring that people in our community and across the country have access to not just affordable, but dignified housing. And that we ensure we, we close the social safety net, particularly around the gaps in healthcare when it comes to mental health supports, when it comes to dental care and eye care, and when it comes to long-term care. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And this is actually what I've heard, you know, was knocking on with so many friends behind me here. And it's so wonderful to see you all with us here today also. Behind me here are not just friends with signs. These are friends who've been knocking on doors, on street after street, night after night, in the rain, in the sweaty heat, in all of it, to be listening to our neighbors across our community. And having done that in 2019, knocking on over 45,000 doors across our community, a lot of folks have asked me, well, what's different this time around? And the number one difference I'm hearing is that everything we heard in 2019 has only been made worse. Long-term care is one of those examples. So many stories in 2019 of folks who were concerned. And now, speaking with a woman in Mount Hope just a few days ago, and she shared her mom's been waiting in hospital for a long-term care bed for three months. Some of these conversations are pretty hard. Some of them involve some tears, but all of them are genuine, where I can actually hear from that experience and then share that experience back with you to say, that's not okay. Or speaking with a personal support worker in the St. Mary's Hospital uh, area. As she shared with me, she's not providing four hours of care a day. She's lucky if she provides four minutes of care a day, and that's not okay. And that's why it's important that Greens across the country, like Paul Manley in BC, have been putting forward legislation and motions to say, we can do and we must do so much better. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? We can. The Parliamentary Budget Officer reviewed a motion that Paul Manley put for, forward just a few weeks ago. If we were to cut the wait times, if we were to increase the care to actually four hours, if we were to pay personal support workers as they should be paid so they don't need to work in three different care homes, it would cost, the Parliamentary Budget Officer put forward $13.7 to be taking better care of our parents and our seniors and our elders. But you know what? In the last year alone, we tripled subsidies to fossil fuel companies up to $18 billion a year. So don't tell me the money's not available to do what we need to do to, to invest in the priorities of our neighbors. And that's why I'm so proud to be in front of so many friends who've been listening to neighbors across our community share these stories of their priorities from long-term care to climate action and to be alongside Anna Me and alongside Mike, other Greens across the country who are proving that if we choose to put down all of the partisanship and choose to focus on these priorities, this is how we're gonna make progress. We're gonna do it together. Thank you. Yes. And so now we'll have some time for questions from the media. And so with this, I'll pass it to the leader of the Green Party of Canada, to Annemi Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, that, you know, Mike and Mike, and Mike 
to call you through the magic mic. Yeah, <laughs> you uh, absolutely, uh, you know, you just hit it on the head. Uh, absolutely. This is the time. This is the time we will take those lessons. We can make things uh, better. There is nothing we can't do if we don't put our if we put our minds to it and work together. Uh, yeah, we're trying to get come in tighter, tighter. Don't don't be shy. Don't be shy. Uh, and with that, avec ça, um, nous allons prendre des questions. S'il y a des questions. Thank you, Madame Pal. Our first question today comes from Robert from the record on the ground. Hi, Anna May. Uh, I'm just interested to know what your you know view is of where this party is going. Um, essentially, what can a green candidate bring to Ottawa that another party can't? Yeah. D did you come late to the uh, press conference? <laughs> Were you not listening? <laughs> okay. Listen, I don't need any uh, any excuse. Uh, to say it uh, again, I will say it again. Uh, what Greens bring at this moment that is so important uh, beyond uh, our innovation, beyond the innovation uh, that is just part of our DNA, uh, beyond uh, a commitment to the climate and a plan for the climate, which is unparalleled, uh, beyond a willingness uh, to uh, finally complete our social safety net in every single way, because now is the time, as, as Mike said, uh, to do that we bring the possibility of a change in the culture. We bring the possibility of working across party lines in the way that we need to if we are going to tackle the biggest challenges that we have in the time that we have to do it. The climate is not partisan. The climate doesn't care if you're liberal or conservative or green. Uh, what the planet needs is help and it needs that help now and now is the time to do it. And obviously we can go further faster if we do it together. We have demonstrated in places like PEI, in New Brunswick, in British Columbia, here in Ontario, uh, that when Greens are elected, they are able to work well with others on the things that matter the most. Um, so at a time when we see uh, the dissent, and we're seeing it the closer we get to election day, into the partisanship, into the toxic language. Some of us will have seen the, the horrific flyer that the NDP has put out attacking our own party. They know that they are electing someone uh, and a party that will rise above, uh, but certainly we know from what Mike just said that he is there to rise above, to elevate politics and to ensure that we get the work done and that we're there for the people above everything else. Do you think that Kitchener Center is going to go green? For sure. For sure. For sure. I don't know. Is Kitchener going green? Yeah. Is Kitchener going green? Yeah. I think there's your answer. <laughs> Thank you so much, Madam Paul. This concludes our question from the ground. We'll now move to questions online. The first question is from David Thurton from CBC. Hi, good morning. Just mic check. Just want to make sure you can hear me. I can hear you. Yes, perfectly. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for taking this question. Uh, I, I kind of wanted to, to ad address this to Mike Morris. Um, oh, would you, you like can, me to pass it? Yes. One moment. Or, you know, you can relay it to him. All good. Either one. Uh, come, come. Let's share, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead, David. Uh, hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. David Thurton from CBC News here. Um, I, I just wanted to ask you, you know, Paul, Madam Paul has been quite public that, you know, she doesn't want to jeopardize anyone's chances in this election. Um, and so she's, you know, only going to certain writings on invitation if the candidates want her there. Why did you want Paul to be here with you today? Can you just explain that to us? Thank you. Can I repeat the question sure. for those? So David Thurndon from CBC asked why we, we were so excited. Sorry. Why we're so excited to have Anna Me with us this, this morning. And David, the answer is because Anna Mee, like every other Green I've ever met, is focused on putting communities first and parties second. Yeah. That, you know. <laughs> because everything I hear from you, Anna Mee, is exactly what I hear from so many of my neighbors here in Kitchener. That this is a time that calls for actually focusing on our democracy in place of politics, on the priorities of all of our neighbors. And David, like you, when I was watching the leaders de, de, uh, de, debate, 
That's exactly what I heard from enemy time and time again, that it's time to be more respectful of one another. This is exactly how Mike Schreiner operates every day in Queens Park, that we know that by being respectful, that by actually focusing on the things we all care about, that's how we're going to make progress on the biggest challenges we face. And there's no time to lose when it comes to climate, when it comes to good housing, and when it comes to good health care. David, thank you. Right. Oh, here, here you go, Mike. So you can hear the questions. Right. Do you have a follow-up, David? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a totally different, different question here. Um, two NDP candidates have resigned following like, unacceptable online comments. Um, you know, these were comments that, you know, basically tra tracked in the area of anti-Semitism. I'm sure you've seen them. I'm sure you've heard about them. Um, so, you know, what do you make of, of the anti-Semitism, the, the, the discrimination that we've seen in this election? Do you have any comments? Do you want to react to that? Mm -hmm. So the question is about uh, the anti-Semitism that we've seen in the in the election cycle. Uh, there were two candidates uh, for the NDP that apparently stepped down, announced they were stepping down as candidates earlier today. Uh, we know that for years hate has been on the rise in Canada and we know that there has been a tremendous spike in anti-Semitism during the pandemic. Uh, we know that there has been a spike during the election campaign as well. And as a, uh, can as a leader, uh, first and foremost, but also as a Jewish woman, uh, it, is, it is difficult to see. And it is gratifying uh, to see the voices that were raised uh, in opposition to the comments that were made. Uh, it is gratifying to know that there are those uh, who are going to raise their voices because we have said many times that silence is the thing uh, that emboldens hate. Uh, that silence uh, allows uh, these ideologies to grow uh, and that the dark corners of social media, the dark corners uh, of our country are exactly uh, where these ideologies have, have, uh, have had some space, too much space to take root. And so I'm just asking everyone uh, to commit to doing that simple thing, which is when you see it, call it out. Don't hesitate to call it out. And please know that the Jewish community, that the Jewish candidates from all the parties uh, that are running for election need your support. They need you to lend your voices. It is the most likely thing that is going to tamp down on that, uh, on the hate. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, there are many other forms. And this is, a, this is a pivotal time. We have spoken, David, about the need to attack the root causes of hate, the root causes um, of, of, of division and polarization. This is the time, as Mike has said, and as Mike has said, to attack poverty, uh, to attack inequality, to attack systemic discrimination, because those are the things that feed these uh, attitudes and uh, we need to get to the root causes. We have everything we need to get to the root causes. Thanks very much for the question. Thank you so much, David. Our next question goes to Alain Bouzet from Radio Canada. Uh, oui, bonjour. Je suis pas avec Radio Canada, mais ça va. Non, non, c'est uh, pas Radio Canada. <laughs> Désolé. Désolé. Madame. Bonjour. Non, pas grave. Uh, bonjour, Madame Paul. Et je voulais juste avoir une précision uh, sur la question de la langue française comme étant la seule langue officielle du Québec. J'aimerais savoir, êtes-vous d'accord avec cette reconnaissance que le français ne soit que la langue officielle du Québec? Oui, merci. Alors, la question, euh, c'est sur la reconnaissance de la langue euh, française comme la seule langue officielle du Québec. Euh, comme j'ai dit euh, à plusieurs reprises, euh, il y a des questions constitutionnelles qui, qui euh, se trouvent dedans à euh, cet enjeu. Euh, moi, j'étais désolée, pas désolée, mais déçue de voir euh, euh, le Parlement et les différents partis au Parlement euh, ne pas engager dans un débat, dans une analyse compréhensive euh, de cette question. Parce que ce n'est pas, pas uniquement une question pour le Québec, c'est aussi une question pour les autres provinces. Euh, si, par exemple, une autre province au Canada décide euh, que, la langue, euh, euh, que la langue anglaise soit la seule langue officielle, je serais très inquiétée en tant que, par exemple, maire de deux membres de la francophonie euh, de ce pays. Alors, euh, si ça, you know, en ce qui concerne la loi 96, en ce qui concerne la question euh, de, euh, du statut de euh, langue française, soit au Québec, soit dans le reste du Canada, 
ça mérite uh, une analyse compréhensive, ça mérite uh, un débat. Um, et puis, c'est une question d'être décidé uh, par uh, le Parlement, par uh, les, uh, les, uh, mon, um, les résidents uh, de, de ces provinces et aussi um, uh, uh, au, uh, au final uh, par uh, un processus uh, beaucoup plus uh, compréhensif de, um, que ce que nous avons uh, vu à, à ce point. Euh, je comprends ce que vous me dites, mais je ne vous parlais pas spécifiquement d'inscription dans la Constitution ou de la loi 96. Je parlais juste du principe de reconnaître le français comme la langue officielle. Votre L québécoise vient de dire que oui, ils reconnaissent au Québec, au Québec le droit de dire le, le français est la seule langue officielle. Donc, vous n'êtes pas d'accord avec ça? Comme je dis, c'est une question qui, uh, qui soul, uh, soulève des questions uh, constitutionnelles. Uh, alors, uh, ça mérite une analyse uh, uh, compréhensive. Uh, J'ai dit que uh, c'est très important uh, parce que c'est sûr que ça aura des implications pour uh, des autres uh, uh, provinces uh, au Canada. Uh, alors, je, je ne suis pas, bon, je ne suis pas en ce moment sans, um, sans cette analyse uh, dans une position de dire ça. Uh, la reconnaissance uh, des deux langues officielles, c'est quelque chose qui est là dans notre constitution. Um, si on veut changer ça, uh, il faut avoir une analyse compréhensive pour uh, confirmer quel est le, quel est le procès de le faire. Uh, alors non, je ne suis pas dans une position pour, uh, pour dire uh, ça dans l'affirmative. Uh, Um, et uh, c'est une question qui est ouverte et j'espère que la prochaine session du Parlement va considérer uh, cette question uh, dans une manière uh, considérée et uh, sans uh, des questions partisans um, uh, no, qui, uh, je, je trouve, uh, sont de plus en plus, uh, uh, le, no, uh, trop, uh, prend trop de poids uh, dans ces discussions. Mais sur votre aile québécoise? Le, le, bon, l'aile québécoise, euh, nous, nous avons dans notre parti euh, une, euh, une ouverture à des différences euh, d'opinion. Je ne suis pas d'accord avec l'aile québécoise sur ce point. Il, 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 il sache euh, très bien que euh, j'ai une euh, différence euh, d'opinion sur ce point. Nous avons été très clairs euh, sur ce, ce point. Merci. Merci. From me. That now concludes our questions online in today's press conference. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone for being with us. We're going to be doing uh, some means reading, I think. You know, the whole shock and awe of this big group behind us. Thank you to Mike. Thank you to Mike. Merci à tout le monde. Thank you very much.